Hi, I'm Mike from Hackaday, and I'm here with Massimo from Arduino, and you've just made a really um, interesting announcement here at Maker Faire Shenzhen. Yeah, so we announced that we're partnering with Seed Studio to manufacture products with the Genuino brand for the Chinese market. I think it's an important step because Seed is an important member of the maker community, and uh, you know Eric is one of the prominent makers in this country, so I think it was the national partnership. So is this a similar partnership to what you have in America with um, Adafruit? Yeah, absolutely. So I guess, you know, being part of the maker movement means also that when you work with people that share the same values, have the same ideas about open source and about collaboration and contributing, giving back. And uh, so obviously there are some natural choices for us that are very easy because we've been working together for years. So I think one of the really important things in, in the maker movement with businesses is building up trust. Mm -hmm. um, and so I know that Seed Studios has trust, but there are also um, you know, a lot of uh, clones and, and copies on the market. Do you think there's room for an officially branded, um, well-priced Arduino? And, and what does the future of that look like in uh, Shenzhen and in China? Well, I guess there is definitely room for that. And funnily enough, <laughs> Arduino here is kind of a fuzzy word because everybody's been making boards with Arduino written on it. So clearly if you want to connect something with the founders in a way, Genuino came as a, you know, with good timing to be able to say, you know, this is connected to the, the founders. So you can easily identify where it comes from. And I think there is definitely that moment because now they're becoming incredibly interested in education. They want to make this part of education at every level. I went to a school, it was just one of the high schools here, 2,000 students. They have a maker space that was made by Seed Studio. So it's an important moment in the Chinese history. And I think making something which is good quality and carries certain principles and values, it's what's needed right now. Now for people that are um starting hardware companies are there are there challenges or benefits to starting them in China well obviously if you start them from Shenzhen you have access to an incredible uh, supply chain and so you know we were able to price this new Genuino Uno incredibly aggressively uh, because here the supply chain it's you know, you literally walk down the street and you get every single thing you need. Parts, assembly people, test people. So you have everything locally. And so I think this is very important. And clearly, if you want to build hardware, this is one of the places where you want to be. Mm -hmm. uh, also because the image that people have about China is in like a factory in the middle of nowhere where people sleep on the floor. I don't think that's Shenzhen. Yeah. Shenzhen is about people with qualification, people who are engineers, who do very good quality. You know, this is the first Arduino, so in a way, Gen Genuino that came out of the factory here. It is very good quality. So I think it's about turning the made in China into proudly made in China. This is for the Chinese market. So what are your feelings on engineering in China? If people are here um, starting companies, can they find talent to help them get past the problems in their design and, and manufacture process? So what we know, what I can see right now is that in Shenzhen, they can find everything about hardware. They, they can find it here. Good engineers, good manufacturing, everything. They can find everything here. I've been told that they can find less people that know about software, but I think that's changing because Tencent is one of the buildings around here, yeah. and they have this WeChat with hundreds of millions of users, so the software is coming. And what I think we need now is to work with them on the more creative side. I think the government here is really pushing on making Maker something that people understand about because it's one of the ways you can create the creative companies, the one that invent the product here. Yeah instead of just somebody comes here and manufactures here. So you will be able to find designers and other creative uh, people here in the next few years. So uh, I usually use Arduino as a great example when I talk about open hardware. Thank you. Uh, but recently um, we've seen some, some tension and some stress between Arduino.cc, which is the, your company, and Arduino.org. So for other companies that are getting started that are thinking about open hardware, that are looking at this going on right now, do you have advice like don't be worried about the future of open hardware, it's still worth getting into? What do you think about that? So I think definitely open hardware, it's very important. Uh, the benefits and the value contribution of open hardware is undisputed. So what the problem is that if you're doing open hardware, effect effectively your brand 
it's what can make people understand who you are. Because obviously open hardware means that when, once you make this, everybody's going to be able to make exactly this. So what is the difference between you, you, the creator, and somebody who just uses your technology? Is effectively your brand. So one of the things I can say, just do get into open hardware, embrace it. The only thing is that, you know, be very, very careful at the very beginning to, you know, get a lawyer and yeah. sign very strict contracts with every supplier you work with because one day they can wake up and say we were actually the very first people to use that name so we own that name mm -hmm. and then suddenly you have to you know spend months in court to try to fix that and you know so do you think long term there will be damage to the community surrounding arduino because of this or will this be repaired and moved past i think and i hope that this will be repaired and we move faster. This thing actually has enabled us to actually explore some areas that before we couldn't do. Like, you know, this localized manufacturing, exploiting local talent and doing made in the US for the US, made in China for China. It's all things that came out of the fact that we kind of broke off this relationship. So I think a lot of good is coming out of this. There's also a lot of damage and I'm sorry about what's yeah. happening. I cannot fix it. Sure. You know, I think the community should talk yeah to other people and say to them you know stop stop doing this stop damaging this and that's interesting you know one of the things about um you know closed source uh, businesses a lot of times you don't want to see other companies come in and start um, working in the market is there something in open hardware that encourages people to come in and helps share experiences between companies to get more open hardware companies well you know the interesting thing that i i just had a conversation with the ceo of expressive system and they make this es86 very, very va uh, cheap, but very good Wi-Fi chipset. They understood that they didn't have a good SDK. They couldn't compete with the big name. So they said, you know, here it is, open source community. And boom, it became the darling of the open source hardware community. And now they're competing with much larger companies because of the value created by the community. I mean, that's an, nobody knew about them yes. six months ago. Now they're like, you know, oh yeah, totally, ESP86, whatever. So I think, Open hardware and open source software can bring you this, can bring you this, you know, you, you contribute something, you get back. Mm -hmm. As long as everybody, in a way, you know, somebody once told me that open source is about being awesome to each other. Mm -hmm. So as long as we're all awesome to each other, it's, it's, it can only grow. Yeah, and you know, I think everyone appreciates companies who put something above the profit line, an ideal above the profit line, mm -hmm. something that moves us all forward. Um, while also have making a good business. So uh, so one of the things that I want to clarify is that I'm not a communist and I don't believe in <laughs> total, you know, free for, you know, I believe in the in the market, I believe in companies, I believe that you can make profit and you should do profit, yes. but you should balance the profit with giving something back because you give back or you give to the community and you get back in like recognition, love, and also sales. If your objective is just to come in and make a quick buck, Sooner or later, people will figure out who you really are, and then it's and then either yeah, obviously you damage the community, but you actually don't get that much back. Yeah. So I think balancing profit with the benefit of the community is the key. Well, thank you so much for talking to us today. Congratulations yeah. on launching Duino, Genduino uh, in Shenzhen, and we look yeah. forward to seeing a lot more from Arduino in the future. Yeah, thank you very much, and to the. Uh, you know, Hackaday community, be be nicer to Arduino on the comments. <laughs> that's a joke. I think that's all in jest. <laughs> okay, good. All right, good. thank you. Hey, thank you.